Hey guys, Jen Cravasi here, and we're getting ready to do the mouse video. So, a while back, I did a silly little video on the color wheel and mixing colors. And when I opened the printer today, because we're going to do a test strip, and I'm going to show you what that means and how you can utilize it for just about anything you do. But when I opened the printer to change the printer cartridges, it reminded me that a printer only contains four things. Magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. And if your printer can make all those cool colors out of just four, so can you. Let's make a mouse. Okay, so you guys have been practicing, I know that, and we're definitely going to be using a wig bait because it has a general shape of a mouse already. Tapers down and then we can just attach the tail. Now here's the basics. With the wig bait we've already taped off the bill and you know me, I am a stickler, so I like to get all the bill taped off because you just want that body to look like what it's supposed to look like. Also, you have to use a hook because you're going to have a tail on the end of this. So this is just a regular old Eagle Claw laser sharp. It's not a extra wide gap or EWG. The hook that you choose is going to carry the worm. I like the finesse worms, the trick worms. A black tail is good, a white tail is good, a pink tail is good anything that's going to help match the hatch and you have to have a hook that's large enough on an eyelet to put the, uh, the split ring through. So there we have that. Now the other thing that I always do especially when I'm doing match the hatch and maybe if it's a new pattern and, and I think it's a great practice tip for you guys take a look at what you're going to be doing. Go take a, a bunch of pictures or get some pictures offline and look at what you're going to be painting. Look at the way the hair is. Look at the coloring. It's got black eyes. We're going to use black eyes today. And then the other things is I've made three cutouts. Okay, I've made one cutout for the ears, which are going to go on the top of this mouse. I've made paws. We're going to have four paws that come on the side of this mouse towards the back. And I've done a nose cutout, which is going to go right here. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do today. Now the reason I have two pictures here, I've got one as an adult mouse, I have one as a pinky, but the pinky is neat because the skin does not change on a mouse. The mouse does not have white skin or black skin or skin like us that's a flesh color. It's got pink skin, so a reddish pink. One of the reasons I wanted you guys to see that is because it's really going to help with laying down our base. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put on an opaque white primer and then we're going to use a little bit of pink in here and that's really going to make a difference when you're making this mouse. And then to come back and do the nose, the paws, and the ears, you can see that there's pink in the ears, you can see that there's a little bit of dark spot there because you want to get that shading in, and then you've got brown. Really all you have to do to get close is do some pink with a little bit of a shading and a darker color on that but that's going to be at the end. The other thing that we have, we've got our fan brushes. I've got a little tray here for loading paints because we're going to incorporate a couple of different techniques. We're going to be using almost like a bry brush that I showed you. We're also going to be using some spray over. And we're going to keep it real basic color. So we're going to go ahead and pull our colors out. 
We do have that peach flesh, Createx dark brown, a little bit more of the detail burnt sienna, black, white, and then coming over here, we've got this transparent flamingo pink, but we really want to, we don't want the, the skin this deep underneath of it, so we're going to mix a little white with that, and we're going to reduce that just a little bit. These are for the dries. If you go back a couple of lessons, you remember that I say that you really want thin if you're going to be using spray. So that's where our FW paint comes in. Hey buddy, you going to help teach the lesson today? Maybe? Okay. How am I doing? For this, we've got the flesh tint. We need some browns and some whites and a black. And watch out, bud. Watch out. Good boy. We also want something that's just a little bit deeper. Let's see. Got a red earth. Now this is interesting. This is definitely redder than this. This is more of a brown. But just like with all paint companies, sometimes the formula changes or maybe one batch was made. But I'm going to shy away from the super red here and I'm going to go towards the brown. And then I also want to grab some sepia. I know. it is. I knew I had it. Sepia. Ta-da! There are probably some of you that have not done a mouse before. Um, if this is your first mouse, then hopefully this is going to help you guys out a little bit. But the, uh, the watercolor paper is helpful when you're matching shades. It's a, we call it a test strip. You really want that light that lighter tone of pink. So we're going to mix this up. Well, I think that's pretty good. Got plenty of white in it. And again, you don't have to be exact, but you can see when you start doing that. And also, of course, you have paper towels because you want to keep everything as clean and color free as possible when you're doing test strips. So we need to put our flesh down. Make sure the gunk is off of here. Start with our white. We're not going to do a whole bunch of white. We're not going to make this a really thick base layer or a prime coat. There we go. Now, something else that I've done for you guys, since I have the, the decent lighting now, you guys can see that I've got studio lighting up in here. I also brought the heat set. And on today's bait, I want to show you guys start to finish what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how I do it. This video might run a little bit long. But it's definitely going to be thorough on process. So we've got a basic, 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 basic white primer. To that, we're going to add in this pink. Now I've mixed a little bit, and I've got my pressure up around 45, which is pretty high, but it gives me a nice even base coat. And it also lays it on thick enough to where I generally don't need to use two coats. But the pink is going to go on a good bit thinner. 
Well, there we go. It's like watching paint drying. Just trying to get that last drop in. Every drop counts. We're going to pull this back to about 20. Make sure we have it coming out pink, and it is. You just want to give this a once over. Now when you turn the pressure down like I have from 45 to about 20, just that little bit that I put in the chamber is plenty to coat the entire bait. You don't need to mix a whole bunch of paint for this. There we go. The next thing that I'm going to be doing with a lower pressure, we're leaving that alone, is I have this flesh tent. And this is where the spray part of this comes in. Just need a few drops. We're going to kind of model this, what I mean by model, and just so you can get an idea of what this color looks like pure. There's your color. It's fairly light. The other thing that I have, it's a cup because we're going to be using brushes today and you want to keep those brushes clean. Always a good idea. So we've got a couple of that. We're just going to kind of model that and that kind of, we're adding a random spray pattern just little blasts here and there to kind of break up that straight pink. And you can see that that occurs naturally on this mouse. So now you're starting to see where I'm going with this. Your flesh tint matches some of the lighter shades and something else that you may or may not notice, but on most mice that are not albino mice, that they're not white with the red eyes like you find in rats commonly, a white belly. Rat, uh, rats and mice generally have, when they're dark browns and browns and, and like the yellowish brown field mouse color, they have a white belly. So the fur, we're going to eventually stroke on some white fur on the, on the belly of that. One thing that I'm noticing as I'm going through this today, folks, um, I have come down with some sort of yuck. So if I'm not my bubbly personality, I do humbly apologize. Um, just not, I'm a little bit under the weather today. So my apologies if I'm kind of rambling and not halfway there. Um, now that we've got this flesh tent on, we're going to add just a little bit of this pearl white. And, and again, I'm sticking with these light colors first. And even at a lower pressure, kind of get that on. And then because it is a pearl, you want to make sure that you get all that out of your chamber and that you heat set this right after you've laid it on. Or it'll have a tendency to run. You don't want, you don't want it to run. Right. Well, the first technique, like we were showing you guys, a quick throw off there, is going to be with your fan brush. We're going to come in, let's see, is this a sepia? That's the burnt umber. There's your sepia. A 
Oh, looks like that's clumped a little bit. That is not what you want to see at all. Yeah, okay. So this, even though it's a brand new bottle of paint, the paint has hardened in the eyedropper. And that's something good to note um, because I know some of you guys that use the FW out there have said, hey, I'm having a real hard time. And I'm wondering if you guys are using your eyedropper, if it's starting to thicken up a little bit. Now that's obviously this stuff is super thin. Um, so that's a bit too much, but that's okay because we can dump the rest of that off once we're finished with this color. go. I'm going to bring this down to about five. I'm spraying at five. And remember what I said, you want to get as little as you can. We're going to work from the back of the bait to the front of the bait on the top here. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do the sides. see now you can angle this a little bit differently but right away you can kind of see what's going on here you immediately start to see that fur pattern and something else if you notice that your brush is getting a little bit too wet one of two things you can do you can flip it over and damp it out on this piece of or, or on your paper towel you can on a piece of watercolor pad or scrap paper or you can flip it over and just make little imprints just like that because that anything that imitates your fur and you do, actually you really don't even need this on a helping hand unless you're actually doing the spray over like we just did but even after after that short bit of painting on the back you can see that fur is really starting to take shape and it will we're going to turn it on its side we're going to do the same thing we want to make sure that that's fairly dry And we're going to come down this side and do the exact same thing. Real light. Just kind of spray in the center. And if you notice that your brush is starting to get a little bit too wet, Set your airbrush down, flip this over, and just make those imprints. Because that will work for you as well. And if you see that this is starting to get sticky and you don't want it to, then the other thing you can do is just give it a quick rinse. And you see that color come right off in your red solo cup. Okay, and this is where your paper towel is going to come in because you don't want just regular old water. One thing you might want to do is, if you do have a couple of extra brushes, set this off to the side. And use another brush. Let that dry a little bit. Which we're going to do, we're going to flip this over. Now remember we want the fur basically in the same direction, so we're going to be spraying from the tail backwards like that.
And then as your, again, as your brush gets wet, and I know this can be a bit of a tedious process, just press that down, make your imprints, and it does one of two things. Gets your excess paint off your brush, and it makes a cool pattern on your bait. So you can see that this is really starting to take shape now. It's doing exactly what you want it to do. And you've really got that feathered fur on here now. Do that on both sides. Okay. Now we've got some hair going. We're going to come in with a little bit lighter of a color here. And we're going to drop this directly onto that, just one drop. And I'm going to pull this paint off until I've got a little bit drier of a pattern. And now we're going to start folding in other colors. And you can see that this is getting pretty dry. You want a dry brush to work with. Add one more drop. And again, we're using it against this because you can see that these colors are actually in this bait. We're starting to lose a good bit of that pink background, but there's still enough to where you can tell that there's skin underneath of all this. The other thing that I wanted to do that I didn't do yet, get a little bit of sand going on. So let's throw a drop of sand down. Have a little bit lighter. And fold that sand in. And then we're going to bring, once this is pretty much folded through, we're going to bring the black and white as a basic accent to finish this bait off. Kind of get that dried. Put that back on there. Let's see, maybe just a wee bit of gray. Once you get that initial spray down, you can really see where that's starting to take shape. Let's get this back up the way it's supposed to be. I've got a brush here that's kind of half dry. I'm going to add just a couple of drops of black into the airbrush. We want to make sure that our pressure is decent. So bring it over here. Test it out. Looks pretty good. Come back over to your mouse. Just do a couple of little random splotches here. Pull 
that out. And do one over the eyes here. And flip the bait over. Actually, let's do one on the nose. Give it just a little bit. And then you can see that's pretty dry. Now we can kind of wisp that. I oh, know, wisp, it doesn't sound like it's a word you'd use on a bait, but for this kind it is. You can see with the excess, we're just pulling that back into the bait. And now we've really got, and I want to do it on the sides here as well, um, we've really got that hair pattern going well. and then just bring that real light you gotta work real light with this you don't want to muddy it up you're just barely using the tip of this brush to just fold that hair pattern down the sides of this bait now the one thing that we haven't done that I want to show you guys is we want to extend that onto the belly and you guys can see, hopefully you guys can see, what that does once you start to add on just a few strokes. Now remember we have that white pearlized underneath that so that whatever's on the bottom of this bait is really going to pop and shine. Okay, and now we're going to accent without the airbrush. We want to go ahead and clean off our airbrush and get the chamber cleared out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. I'm going to shoot it right into the trash can and then we're going to add our white accents. Because you can see in this there's a little bit of white here and there, just little random spots of it. And we want to incorporate that into the bait as well. And then we're, we're almost ready to start do the detailing. We've got our chamber cleared out. We've got our brushes pretty much clean. I didn't clean this one yet. I'm going to add a couple of drops of white here. And we're just going to get that all happy. And you can see that it's making a lighter shade gray. We're just going to mix this right here with the brush as we get lighter and lighter. That should be good. Now we just want a couple of areas of pull down here. All we're doing is accenting. Pull, pull that hair out one way and run it over the back the other way. And then before that sets and dries, just a little bit of dark brown. Drop that brush in to clean. This one's been sitting here a while, so it should be good. And now you've got your top coat of fur. that pink. So we're going to accent that. And 
then just a wee bit of black. Just to finish it off in a random pattern. Alright, we're going to heat set this. Last but not least, just a little bit more ruddy red, just to finish this off. Kind of pull those fibers out. Real light, just working with the back of the brush, just the tip. And on the belly, I'm going to go ahead and that real quick, dab that off, bring that over. On the belly, we're going to finish it off with that white. It's probably way too much white. easy. Get that fur going. And you notice that I'm kind of variating the way that I run the pattern of the brush. You kind of start towards the center and push out. Start towards the center and push out. And there's that belly fur. Maybe just a few wisps. the basics down. Now we got to detail it. All my brushes should be in water now and they are. You can see that we've stayed consistent with the basic colors of the mouse in the pattern. We've got the pink underbelly and you can still see that in some areas and that's done intentionally because you can still see the skin in some areas on the mouse itself. No mistakes in nature folks. Now I'm still running this around 15, no higher than that. Let me bring it down to about 10. See what kind of spray I've got. That's pretty decent. We'll go from the top down. We're going to do the ears first and I'm going to do white. And then we're going to put the pink in. We want to look. You can see where the eye is and see that the ear is a little bit further back. So a way to associate that with the gill, this gill plate, is to drop these ears right behind the gill plate on this mouse. So we're going to hit it with white once. Lift that up. Come to the other side. Come dry that off as we go. Hit this other side right behind that gill plate. Make sure it's lined up pretty close. Pull 
pull that out. Now remember, we're not going to leave it that color, but we have to do a baseline of white. We got to reprime our, our areas that we're going to be putting detail on all the way down the mouse. So now we're going to do the same thing with our little paws here. Flip that over, hit the other side, and whenever you have worked on one side, you want to flip that over and work on the other side for the other side of the lure. Now the paws don't have to line up as exactly as your ears do, simply because paws are going to be swimming if the mouse is in the water, if it were a real mouse. And then the last piece to do with the white is your nose. And we're going to add that right into this, right down the middle of the bait. Fold that over, and we have a nose. I'm going to add just a couple of drops of this pink in. We already have white in, which is a good thing. And we want to, there we go, we're starting to go white there. Let's get this nose right. Pink. Done with the nose. Go back on these ears. You just want to come over right where that last one was that little bit of pink on there. Flip it, dry it. Lay it right over the outline of where it was last time. And then the same applies to the feet. Just lay that right back down over. A little pink. A little pink. Same with this other side. Flip that over. Make sure it's not tacky. Lay that against where you had it last time. Pink and ta da. We've got a, a basic mouse here. The fur looks pretty decent. The ears, we've got all of the, the base coat on. And a lot of this really depends on how crazy you want to get on the detail. Um, I like to get a little bit of detail in there, especially if we're doing a match the hatch. So if you notice this picture, it's got a little bit of dark and we can do that. We can achieve that with just putting a couple of drops of paint on here. And then if you want to get rid of this overspray, you just kind of edge that out and come back and do the same thing. And this is in a, um, what are we using, a dark brown, a transparent dark brown. see that that's taken shape. Kind of scrape that off. And now we want to 
be real subtle with how we do the nose. Just kind of have a couple of marks coming into this. Clean up that unevenness. And then really don't even need any extra paint if you want to get the lines on the feet. There we go. Now we gotta put some eyes on it. Now on these eyes, folks, we're gonna be using this 3D molded chrome quarter inch. It's roughly about 6.2 millimeters. Always wanna get a little drop of that Loctite down. One on, just one little drop on each side is plenty. A little goes a long way when you're talking about this stuff. And folks, again, I, this is probably not one of my better talking descriptive videos because I'm just playing under the weather, but I hope that I've been able to demonstrate the basics on how to put a mouse pattern together. It's a little tricky. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably give it a 7, maybe an 8, depending on what your skill level is. Again, this is by no means uh, one of the best mice out there, but it is an effective mouse, and it's one that I've used many, many times. Now, one thing that we did on the last pattern that I put together when I did a mouse is I just took this waterproof marker here. and I added a little bit of shading and definition. And you guys don't have to do that. Certainly not. But it does help. And then you can kind of better define just a little bit more definition on your feet. And again, you don't have to. Certainly not a necessary part of this bait. I've made mice where I haven't even put the feet on, and that's certainly fine. But there you have it. That is a basic mouse. Once it's clear coated, we're going to show you the finished product with the tail on there. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Again, wholeheartedly apologize. Uh, I generally, um, I'm only sick once every three years, but when I get it, ugh, the yuck stays with me for a few days. So my apologies if this has sounded very blah. It wasn't meant to be, but I have been promising you guys a mouse video. Leave your comments and questions down below at the bottom. Smash that thumbs up button if you liked what I did today and showed you a new pattern. I hope this is one that you can practice. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you guys are watching this, we have completed it. It's out of the clear coat. It's now Sunday morning. I wanted to wait to produce this video until we had this out of the clear coat. But there is your fur pattern. Black eyes. Ears. A little bit of shading in there. The paws. Kept that white belly. And on the back end of this, like I showed you, it's just a one-aught. But the eagle claws have um, just their, their straight worm hooks have got wide enough eyelets to support these little, I've got owner split rings on this one, to support the uh, split ring. I'll show you how we have that set up. We've got the hook completely through the worm because that's when we, we've tested the doo-doo out of this. 
that is the best way that we found that this thing is going to swim naturally and uh, it also increases your hookup ratio a lot of people don't have anything in the back on a wake bait that allows them to catch a fish this does so that's how we set that up and uh, fish hammer this pattern i promise you i've got a pro staff uh, in missouri that just slaughters them on it lake river does not matter so there you have it thanks for watching i know the video ran a little bit long but uh sure do appreciate you guys i'm sorry i was under the weather on this one next one i promise i'll be much more chipper see you guys bye